Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video where today we return with round 4 of season 2 of our F123 My Team Career Mode. Yes, we're back this weekend for the first sprint race of season 2 here from the Azerbaijan Baku City Circuit. Of course, if you missed out yesterday's video uh, from the Australian Grand Prix, obviously the land down under, I would highly recommend going back and checking it out. Safe to say, the first three races of this season... We've been doing pretty well so far, you know. I'm absolutely jinxing myself by saying this, as I'm sure you'll all be well aware. Um, but yeah, three points finishes in a row to kickstart the year. We really have kicked on quite strong uh, heading into the new campaign. More and more upgrades going on the car now have pushed us ahead of Alfa Romeo and Alfa Tauri. And you can see we're probably an upgrade or two uh, behind the likes of Williams and McLaren there. So slowly trying to edge our way to the front of the midfield. Championship-wise, Max Verstappen 10 points clear at the top of the table. Uh, 68 points ahead of Sergio Perez are on 58. Red Bull uh, leading the constructors. In fact, Max Verstappen uh, could be leading the constructors' championship by himself there. Eighth overall in the drivers' championship. Sixth overall in the constructors back ahead of Williams and Haas after another solid points finish last weekend. But yes, yeah, we head in towards Baku though. Of course, if you're new around here, please do make sure to leave a like, get yourself subscribed. It massively helps us out. And of course, yeah, at the time of recording this, really, really close uh, to 110k as well. We might just have crossed over it uh, by the time this video goes live. But obviously, timestamps will be linked down below as well. Of course, Sprint Weekend, uh, you're coming in with a bumper episode here today. So you know what? Let's do this thing. Well, back then on the Azerbaijan City Circuits. Love this venue. Uh, actually, one of the tracks I think is almost as challenging on F123 as it was back on F122, just for how different now uh, the braking model is on this game. But, of course, we've learned a lot since Season 1 of this series, so we definitely okay, now know... Coming up. Get ready to open it. Distance is on your MFD. Well, I was about to say, I definitely now know how to drive it a bit more, but... That lock-up down at turn two uh, will say a very different story, as all that reversing back was pointless as well. Wonderful way to start. Well, a few greens, but mainly purple scores, though, around the rest of the lap. Can never quite remember how many points you need for purple here in Baku, but hopefully this is going to be enough of them. 550? No, not quite. Oh, we're going to be agonisingly close come the end of this. I think five points away from the purple score there, but not enough to get purple to kickstart the weekend. That is frustrating. Well, I sincerely hope the theme for this weekend isn't just going to be agonizingly close. But anyway, into tyre simulation run then. Next up, got to be careful on the throttle. And got to try and make sure we keep the car under the delta. Really, really easy just to slightly lock the front tyres around back of course so many straight line braking zones but you're really trying to get the car slowed down with not a lot of downforce on it so we round our way out of the final corner though got to try and make sure we get the delta back to where we need it and again we're going to be agonizingly close but not good enough for a purple score so it's getting a little bit alarming early on in the weekend can't even lift off to try and get purple last up then is going to be our race simulation run we've, we've done all right so far in free practice i don't think we can be too disappointed uh, with the way things have gone. It's just been close but no cigar on a couple of occasions. So let's try and finish us off with a purple score. Our first lap then immediately looks like we got very, very competitive top speed, which is of course so important around the Baku circuit as well. Hopefully that will carry us obviously right the way through the weekend. Car this season definitely does seem to have a much better straight line speed philosophy than last year's car. But still, you know, we will find very, very shortly after this race weekend that we, we do need some downforce. Spain, uh, Miami, Monaco, all very much more downforce dependent tracks. And making our way then out of the final corner, it is going to finally be a purple score then here in free practice for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Obviously only the one practice session before tonight's qualifying. There is technically another one in game, but I never use it on a sprint weekend. That's a good way to finish off. We'll have a lot more R&D and now we can jump into qualifying. Well, 
heading out then straight into Q1 and really hoping we can start seeing some better performances from Teo Porsche there. 220 miles an hour without the help of any real slipstream as well is rather impressive in towards the first braking zone. But yeah, needs to try and get a good banker on the board. We've made Q3 the last couple of race weekends. Not convinced it's going to be the same story here. Baku is definitely a track uh, where the AI can be quite strong at, uh, especially over one lap pace. Well, I was really hoping Bottas might be able to give me a little bit of slipstream out of the final couple of corners, but this first lap has been quite scruffy, uh, to be honest, similar vein to the Australian GP yesterday. Um, I mean, yeah, we've got good top end speed, we know that. Oh, I've pressed the wrong button, I haven't done that in a while. So I keep doing that on this game, but anyway, up towards the start finish line then, shortest run to the line. It's going to be a 42 2. We go slowest of all. That is not good. Well, Teo Porcher then has gone to showcase what this car is capable of. A 41.5 for our teammate has put him potentially into Q2 for the first time this year. Getting big slipstream from Alex Albon. And Albon, you absolute beauty, immediately peels out of the way as we head down in towards Turn 1. Fantastic awareness there by Williams to know that we were starting a lap just as he was finishing one. But. Yeah, we need to find a lot of time here if we want to make it out of Q into Q2, sorry. Do not want to start making Q1 exits once again in this series. We'll make up a lot of time there through the castle section. We're now pretty much even once again. Only about a quarter of a second through there after a bit sloppy in the first few turns. But yeah, I don't know what it is. We are just struggling to find anything around this venue as we plunge down the hill. Again, we're going to find a little bit more. Need a good run the final proper corner. Don't use the curbing too much. We will get the power down nicely and two tenths up. And we're going to improve, but it is not going to be up by enough here. And a shocking end for the Azerbaijan qualifying. Magnussen on a 141.7. Teoport Chair is going to make it by. We do get closer to the rest of the field, but yeah, missing something here. Whether it was too much wing or what, I won't know. I think we're lining up right at the back. P22, that's awful. Well, Lewis Hamilton then, the only car under 100 seconds at the end of Q1. Uh, both Mercs followed by both Ferraris there, and, well, Sergio Perez down in P9. I'm sure a little bit disappointed. Porcher's got a five-place penalty, so I don't know what that's for. He had a collision with Lewis Hamilton, so he must have completely missed that. Uh, but he does make it into Q2 for the first time this season. But sadly for me, it's the first time this season we haven't made Q2. Lining up at the back then, ready for the Azerbaijan GP sprint race. Luckily, we've got an extra nine laps to get forward. Forget pit stops, forget fuel management. It's pedal to the metal all the way here as we get ready for today's sprint. the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks for today's sprint. A fantastic effort from Charles Leclerc yesterday, and it's put him on pole. And a very happy Carlos Sainz will start second. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Verstappen, Hamilton, Russell, Perez, Gasly, Ocon, Norris, Oscar Piastri, Stroll, Albon, Sargent, Bottas, De Vries, Theo Porcher, Liam Lawson, Magnussen, Joe, Sonoda, Hulkenberg, and Mr. Monaco. Which of these drivers will get pole position today? We'll soon find out. After the points finished last race, let's aim to keep that momentum going. Right, well, this might be the first GP, then, that we don't finish in the points so far this season. Really disappointing qualifying session here in Baku. But luckily, you know, effectively now I'm treating this as qualifying uh, to hopefully start ourselves a bit higher up in the main event. Mixture of softs and mediums. I apparently have got an engine warning light on, so I don't know what that's about. Uh, but hopefully it's not going to cause us too many problems. We're getting ready then to line up on the grid here in Baku. I mean, today could be quite a few days of firsts. Might be the first time Red Bull fails to see the chequered flag first out of everyone. Three wins on the trot for them. I'm sure they're much more worried about the main event tomorrow. But lining up then 
at the rear of the field for us. I think, yeah, we're going to need a miracle. Only points for the top eight, remember. So if we want to try and keep our point streak alive, we are in for quite the journey. Waiting on those five red lights, though, here in Baku. A mighty long hole, but it is finally lights out. And away we go there. Magnus and Joe Guan Yu leaving Yuki Sonoda with nowhere to go. I'm so sorry, Nico Holkerberg there. Tried to go for a gap as Magnussen was impossibly slow in towards the first corner. We're going to be four wide off the exit, though. So we head down in towards turn two and we'll somehow find an avenue that time around. They're still trying to get our elbows out at the start of this race. Three wide off the corner. I think that's with both Alfa and Mayos now. So this has been a rather dramatic start there as Bottas able to put the power down to the outside of the Alfa Romeo car. And there we go. Another place game, P17, then immediately off the start. And yeah, definitely will hold my hand up at a minute. It kind of looked like we swiped Nico Hulkenberg there, but I just was not expecting Magnussen to be as slow as he was early on. But need to try and make up places ASAP in this Grand Prix. Now all over the back of our teammate, Teo Porcher, already this afternoon. As I said about how Red Bull might not see the chequered flag first, one of their cars has got the lead anyway okay, off the start. So Mark there seemingly not happy with five places gained, but yeah, I don't quite know which Red Bull that is then that's already made their way to the front of the field. But yeah, Bottas and Joe are behind me, both on the set of medium. So hopefully we can try and pull away from them early on this afternoon. I mean, I just want to be trying to make forward progress as best as possible. But we know just how competitive the midfield is in this series. As we wind our way through the final couple of corners, both Ferrari cars having a bit of a nightmare then. I think Sykes has dropped all the way down to fourth place early on in this GP, but as we make our way through the final couple of corners, got to use the battery, see if we can try and get a run on our teammate Teo Porcher. Official confirmation then, it is Max Verstappen, of course, uh, that leads the way at the end of lap one. Still under a lot of pressure from that Ferrari. This could be quite a good battle today. Now from Ayos, back down the inside of me there, Valtteri Bottas trying it, but not able to make anything happen. So I think Charles Leclerc has reclaimed the lead at the front, and Hamilton appears to have found his way past Max Verstappen as well. So it's all tossing and turning at the front of the field. I want to try and find a way around Teo. DRS is now enabled, though, as we start lap three. So hopefully we might have a better chance of trying to move past Teo. Got to be so, so careful we don't shred these tyres, though, too early. We know how, you know, how much of this track is all traction-based. Um, and, yeah, so, so easy just to light up the rears quite consistently, especially when you've got the grip early on in the stint. So I'll just try and do the Nick de Freeze line, apparently. Um, yeah, early on in the stint, it's so easy just to allow that little bit of slip on the wheels. But, of course, on F123, that can be very, very damaging very, very quickly, as that was a lot of curb. Right, I mean, we're in identical machinery to our teammate Teo, but we're going to try and use plenty of battery at the final corner there. Almost puts it in the wall. as sights now. New fast lap of the day, but Hamilton in hot pursuit of the Ferrari. Mercedes and Red Bull sense an opportunity here as Teo Porcher runs defensive on the long run back towards Sir 1, 224 miles an hour. And our teammate there, able to get later on the brake, slides the car in towards that turn 1 apex. I mean, it's the first time we've really seen Teo all season, to be honest. It pretty much has been a back marker early on, as now he's lost the DRS, though, so surely we've got an opportunity to try and slip past him. He's going to go defensive. Hopefully, we're not going to battle too aggressively in this race as our teammate there just tries to stay alongside. We'll swoop round him. Now we've got to get in the DRS of DeFreeze. Well, the elbows are coming out in front of us. One of the Aston Martins, I can only assume Logan Sargent now trying to defend for his life from a group of cars there. Lawson, Stroll, Nick DeFreeze all hounding him at the moment as Lance Stroll seems to have made it through. And this works out nicely for me. Definitely seems like the car's struggling a bit more this weekend despite all the extra upgrades. Okay, There's poor chair now dropping back behind Bottas. But yeah, I mean, if we could still recover, you know, maybe to the front of this group, P12 ready for race day wouldn't be too disappointing on the books. But trying to get through is not going to be simple. Trying to put the hammer down, though, out of the final corner. De Vries probably a little bit further away from Lawson than he'd ideally like to be. So we're going to try and utilise that use as much battery as I sensibly can. Need a little bit left in reserve still uh, to try and go on the offensive if we get past the Dutchman as he's going to try and go defensive back towards Sermon. one Similar vein to Teo Porcher. Again though, very, very even on the brakes. We'll try and switch him though off the corner, which we will do this time around. Get the throttle down 
to the inside of Nick De Vries have to attack the curbs and slide in front of him because he really tried to narrow off my run into the corner but we're through four laps to go P15 or two laps to go then this afternoon and just trying to hang on inside the DRS range of Liam Lawson at the moment Hamilton is still in the lead here ahead of I think Carlos Sainz so we could be in for a dramatic end to yet another race this season I mean two photo finishes in the first four would hardly be something to walk away too disappointed with. I know this is only the sprint race, but still, a photo finish is a photo finish. We're just, yeah, like I said, trying to stay ahead of Bottas. Um, medium tyres, I think, definitely now are probably the ones you want to be on. As I, once again, a bit like last season, I've probably just taken a bit too much out of these too early on in the stint. But if we can hang close to Lawson heading into the final lap, might be able to get past him. Right, to start the final lap then, still just trying to hang close to Liam Lawson, but we're going to have to really somehow nail it. If I want to get close enough to the Williams to do anything, Hamilton's still trying to hang on at the front. I think Verstappen and Leclerc are duking it out for the final podium place a little bit further back, but yeah, it's going to be difficult if we want to try and do anything. Still got those cars in front battling out, but yeah, Sergeant Stroll, I think they were both on medium, so there wasn't a lot that Lawson and I could do late on in the day, and to be honest, Lawson... Oh, no. He's just dragging me along ahead of Valtteri Bottas there. I think we somehow got away with that without any damage. Somehow must have nicked the tyre on the wall instead of the front wing. But, yeah, I think just sliding around so much now we just can't put the pyre down. It's like trying to race on F122 all over again. That's just how little grip we've got left in the car. There is a wheel spinning in third and fourth gear. But, yeah, Baku very much a point and shoot kind of track there and by shoot I mean get on the throttle as long as we keep Bottas at bay that's the all important thing and well I think P15 would still end up being our worst qualifying result of the year I think we were 14th in uh, Bahrain weren't we to kick start the year but will it be Hamilton will it be Carlos Sainz at the front of the field I think Lewis might just have a big enough safety buffer at the front of the field but Bottas I'm sure is still sensing opportunity if we can get a good run, if I make a little mistake here in towards the final couple of corners. Hamilton rounds out the final corner. Sykes is closing in, but I don't think it'll be enough for the Ferrari. Mercedes are finally going to topple Red Bull early on this season. There, Sykes will come home P2 ahead of Max Verstappen and Charles Leclerc. There, George Russell, fifth place for him. A disappointing end for Sergio Perez, but Bottas now is within the range of myself there, but three quarters of a second back. As we head out of the final corner, we're just going to completely drain the battery up towards the line. It's P15 here in the Baku Sprint. All right, race over. Take care of the car on the way in. Have a look then at the driver's standings. This result then narrows the gap between our championship leader and the rest of the standings. With the sprint wrapped up, we now have our grid line up for the big race tomorrow. Be sure to join us then for what will no doubt be a fantastic race. Well, there we are then, the end of the sprint race here from Baku. Hamilton takes the win by half a second there. And it's actually Max Verstappen, sorry, down in P6. Checo was the one that made a lot of progress there. So our championship leader struggling a little bit in the sprint race. Both Mercs, Ferraris, Red Bulls and Alpines, the only ones to score points there. Alex Alban agonizingly close in a P9 ahead of Oscar Piastri. But yeah, lining up then P15, ready for the main event. Teo Porcher clearly couldn't look after his tyres, dropping all the way back down to the rear of the field. But 26 more laps to get on with it then. Let's do this thing. A warm welcome to you all at home for today's Azerbaijan Grand Prix. A race that in its short history has already proven no stranger to drama. And where a fourth row start is just about as likely to give you a podium as pole position. With Lance Stroll and Sergio Perez finishing third from there in 2017 and 2018 respectively. The Baku City Circuit measures roughly six kilometers and it's made up of 20 corners and two DRS zones. The circuit winds around the narrow city, through the old town, and even brushes against the city's medieval walls. However, as beautiful as the setting is, this track is also a ferocious technical challenge, where the smallest of mistakes could lead to a 
catastrophic consequence for any one of our drivers. So with the race not far away from starting, here's what today's grid rundown looks like. An immense lap from Lewis Hamilton yesterday puts him on pole position, and the smooth operator Carlos Sainz completes the front row. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Perez, Leclerc, Russell, Verstappen, Gasly, Ocon, Albon, Oscar Piastri, Stroll, Sargent, Liam Lawson, Mr. Monaco, Bottas, Norris, Joe, Magnussen, Sonoda, Hulkenberg, Theo Porsche, and Nick de Vries. And now it's time to head down to the track. It's just about time to go down to the track for the beginning of the race, but before we do, Anthony Davidson, what types of strategy do you think we can expect for today's event? Well, there's a lot that both the driver and the team have to keep in mind when going into a race. The tyres, fuel, energy recovery systems, the list goes on and on. But I think the key to today's victory will come down to the pit stop strategy. Come in too soon and you might find yourself needing more than one stop. Too late and you're putting yourself at a disadvantage by spending longer on worn tyres. Right, well, here we are then on the grid once more here in Baku, ready for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. And fingers crossed today we can try and continue our push back up the order after a rough qualifying session. A few grid penalties around have bumped us all the way up into P14. Um, but yeah, I think today, um, as we found out yesterday from the sprint, I'm going to try and go quite aggressive on the strategy. Eight laps on a set of softs, ten laps on a set of mediums, and then a final eight lap dash once again there. You know, potentially safety cars could come out this afternoon as well. That could certainly change things up as well. Um, but who knows what's going to go on on the Baku City streets. We've got a few cars on hards, a few on mediums. So no one really knows the right way to go about this. I mean, yeah, being completely honest, we are taking quite a gamble today. But not really convinced unless we throw something a bit unorthodox uh, that we're going to have much of a shot of points this afternoon. So we've got to go for it. Sometimes you've just got to accept that on circuits we're not going to score points. We've got to try and do something a little bit different there. Purple lineup on the grid. Waiting on, La uh, sorry, Teo Porcher even I should say, at the rear of the field. Lando Norris has got penalties but he's sitting just behind myself. Was waiting then on those five red lights. Lights out and away we go. And we need to try and get away quite well there as Alex Albon has not done so. Loads of cars. Esteban Ocon as well. So a bit of a roadblock forming as we head down in towards Turn 1. Try to avoid the Alpine there. It's three wide off the corner. That's Lance Stroll trying to make up some places and recover some positions. Down the inside of the Canadian will go at Turn 2. They see Ocon just in front of us getting a little bit out of shape. Well, we've got to utilise these soft compound tyres as early as we can there as Hamilton heads down in towards Turn 3. They're still in the lead of this race. Just nice and easy. Don't want to cook the tyres early on. As you can see, Verstappen struggling uh, now actually behind Pierre Gasly there as former Red Bull teammate. So Gasly, you know, Alpine have looked good this weekend. They seem to have been right there with our front runners. Fantastic pace shown on both Friday qualifying and sprint race Saturday yesterday. So hopefully for them, they can try and keep that momentum up. I mean, for us, I want to see them not doing that so we can try and outscore them in the championship. You know, aiming to try and be kings okay, of the midfield come the end of forward. this season. But we've survived the first few corners, get through the castle uh, nice and tidy then on lap one. Once more, making up some places off the start here on F123. You know, still at the moment, I, I'm in the position of I absolutely love it, um, but I'm sure at some point down the line, and um, you know, maybe if we can constantly gain sort of three or four places every single race, you know, it might, might wonder whether the starts are just a bit too easy inside the game but running away then through the final couple of corners Hamilton leads the way Sergio Perez in hot pursuit Red Bull of course first time they haven't made it to a checkered flag first uh, yesterday afternoon in the sprint but I'm sure they love to try and keep their Grand Prix victories alive as Perez I'm trying to look to the outside of Lewis Hamilton on the run back down towards turn one there but I think the Mexican is just gonna have to sit back as here comes Lance Stroll Unfortunately, yeah, wear on the ICE is not going to make our lives any easier, especially around such a power-hungry circuit. Can we try and get the run back on Stroll out of turn two? Not with a line like that, we won't. So here comes Sergeant as we head down in towards the next corner. Try and give him a bit of a squeeze, and we'll keep him at bay. 
but he's so careful that I don't overwork the tyres early on. I know they don't have to go as far as they did in the sprint race, but still just makes our life so much easier longer term this afternoon. Is trying to get to the inside then of Lance Stroll, just about able to put a long sign in there, but having to use so much battery as we head back down towards Turn 1. 210 miles an hour without the help of DRS. Trying to break at about the 100 metres board, hit the apex. Stroll there, make sure we give him the room, but we slot back through. And we're back into 10th place then, unfortunately. Probably wasn't the best time to go for a move, because now he'll have the DRS off me, but i to try and get within the range of Ocon and Alwyn again at Williams. I definitely feel like we should be able to match today. Because, yeah, we just about have enough to keep the Canadian back. Oh, yellow's out. Someone's got issues. Is that Alex Alwyn falling to the wayside here? I saw him pull out of the line. Yes, it is. Alex Alwyn appears to have a mechanical failure then here in Baku very, very early on in the afternoon. But heartbreak for Williams. As it looks like he could have tried to pick up them more points after the heroics in Saudi Arabia. That promotes us up into the top 10 then. He really did get in my way, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, now Ocon has lost the DRS of the cars in front. I'll try and close in that gap. We're stretching the tyres this lap, and Lance Stroll is going to say thank you very much straight to the inside of me. And he's even picked up the DRS in the process, which is not ideal there. Here comes Logan Sargent as well in the Aston Martin. We might lose two in one go as we head back down. Oh, come on, Sergeant. Got to give me some room around the outside there, mate. And we'll just try and switch him off the corner. We cannot afford to let Lance get away. So we can just see they're aggressively battling with the Aston Martin. But you can see how much wheel spin we're getting off the corner. And Lance Stroll, fantastic traction in that has. Just keep the tyres in the window. Oh, we're going to get jumped by Sergeant again then. I mean, how has Lance Stroll been able to pull away so quickly in just one lap there? We really are struggling for pace against a lot of the other cars this weekend. This track, I think we've just taken the setup the wrong way, unfortunately. And yeah, can't quite balance the tyre wear out against the AI either. Back down into 12th we go. I mean, we can try and use Sergeant to try and get us a bit closer to Lance again. But look how much traction they have off the corners. These soft tyres shouldn't be gone off yet. And the other problem I'm very quickly learning here in Baku is the way the marbles actually interact. This circuit is very much you've got to keep it between the white lines. You can't even afford to put two wheels outside of the white lines like the AI seem to be able to. Um, we seem to get the full effect of the marbles because the AI has always have built-in traction control. They don't. So we're constantly actually playing effectively on a slightly thinner circuit than the AI, and of course, whenever you watch them and you try and emulate their lines, you can't really do a lot against it. I mean, you can see their sergeant through one and two is not doing it, but then out of here, AI can put two wheels out there, and you can see we just get hit with a load of wheel spin. Anyway, we're going to be able into the pit lane then at the end of this lap, but yeah, an interesting finding, I think. I'm just about making sure that we're hanging on inside the DRS of Logan Sargent when we peel into the pit lane. I think Sergio Perez is the first car into the box, so clearly he's trying an aggressive strategy as well. Make sure we get the thing slowed down. They're very, very brave on pit entry, but yeah, we are going to re-emerge in quite a lot of no-man's land, I feel, this afternoon. Teo Porcher running up in P18 then. Um, yeah, still, still was hoping for a bit more from our teammate as... Okay, Yep. Doesn't really help us out much either. Um, but now we've got a few laps, of course. Want to try and take these tyres to about the end of 18. Um, effectively now, this is where we're trying to race from to the flag. We've all got one more pit stop to do. Uh, but I'm going to be on softer, fresher tyres pretty much throughout. Oh, yellows. Hello. Someone got issues? Yeah, one of the Alpha Towers, Nico Hulkenberg now pulling over to the wayside this afternoon. So, is he out or is he just going slowly? Never really tell with Nico. Um, yep, Nico Hulkenberg out then of the Grand Prix. Impressed we've still had no safety car, but another two mechanical failures. That was close. Almost binned it in the castle section. That's how hard we're pushing at the moment. That could have very easily been GG's. Starting to see a few more cars then into the pit lane. The Alpha Tauri of Yuki Tsunoda and the Alpine then, I think, of Pierre Gasly, if I'm not mistaken. 
Um, so, I mean, we're not too far away from a lot of cars. I don't know quite what strategy they're going with as Gasly re-emerges out of pit lane on a set of medium. So that's aggressive. I mean, if he's been able to take the soft, what, 12 laps, first of all, how? Second of all, fair play to him. Sonoda's definitely two stopping, though, going on to a set of soft compound tyres. So maybe we have still got a few more cars to race with. Oh, Gasly already trying to look for a way around Joe Guan Yu there as we head down the hill. And I think the Alfa Romeo just slapped the wall. So we need to just try and sit back here and try to capitalise off the corner. Come on. Yeah, got to get on with it. As to the inside again then as Zhou Guan Yu. This is scary. This is properly scary as we make our way through. And Zhou Guan Yu then just forced to back out of it. He will get the DRS though. So he's probably going to come back at Pierre Gasly. Look at the power. That Alfa Romeo's got when he pulls into the slipstream there. Three wide momentarily as we head back down towards Turn 1. I've had to go over the pit lane entry line, but I don't know if that would be a penalty in real life or not. Down the inside of Zhou Guan Yu as well. A robust move on the Alfa Romeo, but he's got no grip left on those tyres. And that is a cheeky and incredibly scary double overtake. I'm a little bit worried because Pierre Gasly is trying to get a run back on me, but we're trying to close in on Teo. And a handful of other cars there as Paul Chair peels into the pit lane then. We'll take the slipstream from him and give ourselves a little okay, bit of breathing Teo's room. Or we won't. Pierre yeah, Gassi, they're dead set on sending it down at the first corner. And now we're both probably going to try and get a run on Nick De Vries out of turn two there. Pierre yeah, Gassi has got the bit between his teeth, I tell you what. The feisty Frenchman I'm dubbing him today. And now is he going to try and have a look to the inside of Nick De Vries there. De Vries trying to defend for all his worth, but... Yeah, really struggling in that McLaren. That was close to the wall. We will try and get the run off the corner. And the freeze. Yep, we'll lose two in one go then. As Gasly and I are making moves together. But it didn't have scary. Norris into the pit lane as well as I'm guessing Lance Troll. So more places gained at the moment. But of course, we are going to have to pit again before the end of this race. As Ocon has actually re-emerged ahead of Pierre. So Esteban Ocon, he's done that two weekends in a row, hasn't he? Where he's got quite a good pit strategy that's elevated him up the order. Clearly very good on his tyres. Um, but yeah, we're still not inside the points. Poor Liam Lawson. He's got both Alpines now and myself trying to look past him. Esteban Ocon down the inside at the final corner. Is that going to work? Yes, it is. And now Gasly probably going to try and get a run on him as well there. But Lawson now, of course, will get the DRS. Back off Esteban Ocon here. Open up the battery. We've got plenty still in the charge. Let's see if we can try and get a run there. Gasly a little bit slowed up by Lawson. Oh, this is going to get scrappy as we go one, two, and three. As we head back down towards the one there. Gasly still alongside me. Surely the Frenchman's going to try and stay there. Oh, he did, and he pushes me out almost into the wall there from Pierre Gasly. We tried to give him a bit of a squeeze, but somehow we've got away with it. That was incredibly scary. I think Pierre was dead set on wherever I break. He was going to break later, but back into the points we go then here in Baku. We've only got a couple more laps on this set of tyres. Comes Esteban Ocon. I'm going to try and be really cheeky and see if I can manipulate the DRS there. I don't think we have no Ocon. We'll get the DRS off me as Kevin Magnussen and Valtteri Bottas into the pit lane then. So, yeah, if we can try and hang with Ocon then for two or maybe we'll try and extend the stint one extra lap depending on how these soft compound tyres hang up. And obviously just take those softs to the end. We're not going to be a million miles away. Could really do with right about now. Could be a nice safety car. That could really change the makeup of this race late on this afternoon. As yeah, more cars into the pit, so I hadn't even noticed that we were up into P9 now of this race. But we are going to dive in at the end of this one. Ocon on those fresh tyres has absolutely checked out and bolted away from me. Uh, but yeah, give us a safety car, EA. Yeah. Right, end of 18 though going to dive into the pit lane then now. So Sonoda's definitely got a pit again as well. Don't know about Pierre Gasly. I mean, four seconds less than a pit stop in the final eight laps or so. It's going to be a big old push if you want to try and get back there. Um, but I'm not going to give up just yet. You know, I felt like this strategy, like I said, I'm not convinced we would have had enough pace to score points anyway today. So we may as well throw and try and throw caution to the wind and make things happen. Clean, tidy stop. Yes, there we go. That time around, much, much better. Look after these tyres now. You want to finish the race on this compound. Might have forgot about that. Might have forgot just how bad pit exit is here. And well, that, that's been a problem. Would have then heading back out of pit lane as well. So we'd probably lost about six or seven seconds from that spin, to be completely honest. But if we can try and work with the Alpha Tauri here, 
maybe for a little while towards the end. That could work quite nicely. Um, I mean, yeah, we're not that actually far away from the top 10. It's just, of course, Baku is such a weird venue where DRS and Slipstream makes such a big difference. But trying to get to that top 10 is not going to be easy. Oh, Sonoda finding a way around Tear Board Share, and now we're trying to work a way around our teammate as well. Can we go around the outside through this middle sector? Yes, we can. So, yeah, Teo really struggling. I think what he's done is he's done medium hards. And where the AI have done hard medium, they've been able to pull away from him at the end where he wasn't able to get away from them earlier on this afternoon. That's close. Um, but anyway, yeah, four laps to go here from Baku. Just trying to recover any spots we can right towards the end. Gasly, Sonoda, Nick de Vries all trying to battle each other as well. Hopefully they can try and bring us a bit closer. Now the fact we pulled out two seconds in half a lap over Teo goes to show how much he's struggling towards the end. But yeah, definitely don't feel like the car's at the pace this weekend. Maybe just ran a bit too much wing. I think, like I also mentioned, this track doesn't really suit the human player either anymore. And which makes things difficult. As you can see, Sonoda now steamrolling down the inside of his ex-teammate Pierre Gasly. For all those who still remain on good terms. There is Gasly. He's going to get taken right around the outside and will even switch him off the corner. Thank you very much, Yuki Sonoda. Round in the final couple of corners then to start the last lap here in Baku and it looks like we could be in for another photo finish at the front of the field. Charles Leclerc has led a lot of this race but Sergio Perez, that two stop is still working for him at the moment. He needs to try and get within the DRS range of the Monegas driver here if he wants to keep Red Bull's Sunday streak alive. Nick DeFries though, we're going to try and get past the McLaren on the run back down towards Turn 1. Just not brave enough on the brakes relative to the AI there. We will switch him though off the corner. Big kick a wheel spin as we try and put the power down. And oh, a big squeeze by Nick De Vries there. But now we'll have the DRS and surely this is going to be a done deal on the final lap there. Is Perez close enough to Charles Leclerc at the front of the field? That is the question I'm sure is on everyone's minds. It was Mercedes that won on Saturday. Will it be Ferrari or will it be Red Bull? who reigns supreme on Sunday there. Through the final few corners, I think Charles Leclerc has just about got enough over Sergio Perez here, and Ferrari are finally going to kick off their championship campaign here in Baku. Charles Leclerc wins the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Perez and Verstappen will bring home and round out the podium nonetheless, as we've got to try and make sure uh, that we actually get away from Nick de Vries on this final. That looks like Sainz in fourth ahead of Hamilton and Oscar Piastri actually getting between those Mercedes so starting to showcase the pace uh, that our Aston Martin car really does have in this championship. Theoretically it's the second best car at the moment but you wouldn't guess it with the results the drivers are getting but in towards the final few corners though like I said I think there's a couple of little balancing things uh, that need to be tweaked and changed around Azerbaijan but I think that also you know, it was a fantastic excuse to hide the fact the car simply this weekend has not been quick enough. We tried to take a bit of a gamble on the strategy, throw caution to the wind and see if it could pay dividends for us. We were always going to need a well-timed safety car to make it work, which hasn't arrived. But anyway, out of the final corner, down towards the line, you got to take the rough with a smooth. It's P16 here in Baku. And that's the end of the race. We'll see you in Park Fermi. It's victory in Azerbaijan. Great work from the whole team here at the track and back at the factory as well. Some pretty handy driving for good measure. Tell me, Ant, how do they manage to achieve this win? I really feel the track layout combined with the track temperatures we saw today suited their car. These cars come alive when the tyres are just at the right temperature and the driver did a great job managing that as well. They just look so comfortable out there. It's like anything, it always looks so easy when it all just clicks. Here come our winners now, a thrilling race and a tremendous effort by Ferrari. Their history is well known, so it's no surprise to fans the world over to see them come out on top once again.
driver standings have changed. But it wasn't the best weekend for our championship leader, and their advantage at the top has been reduced. So, Anthony Davidson, who would you rank as your driver of the day? Max Verstappen seemed to just effortlessly weave through the other drivers today without a care in the world. He was definitely my driver of choice. It's time to check out the constructors' standings. It was a tough race for our championship leaders who lose ground at the top of the table. And with that, we wrap up another weekend of motorsport action. But with more races lined up, be sure to join us when we come back with more Formula One. Well, there we are then, the end of the Azerbaijan Grand Prix and Charles Leclerc back on top for Ferrari this weekend. Perez starts to take a couple of points out of Max Verstappen. They're still two for two over the course of GPs this year. It just so happens that when Verstappen uh, gets the better of Sergio, it's always the win there. Sainz, Russell, sorry, ahead of Oscar Piastri. Hamilton down in seventh ahead of Ocon. Uh, yeah, Lando Norris, good recovery by him after the grid penalties uh, to score points there. And Logan Sargent, I think... Those are his first ever points in the world of Formula 1, so congratulations to the young American as well. They'll get confirmation in just a moment. P16 for us, not great. Uh, yeah, the strategy just didn't really work, um, all being told there. I mean, yeah, 17 seconds away from points. I don't think we would have scored points anyway this weekend, uh, to be completely honest. You know, we lost a bit of time because of that spin on pit exit. Uh, but yeah, we were never going to get close enough uh, to really have an impact there. Verstappen, though, the gap at the top down to four points once again between him and Sergio. Charles Leclerc up into P3 ahead of Sainz there, ahead of both Mercs. Oscar Piastri still being brutally consistent there, just five points back uh, from Lewis Hamilton ahead of both Alpines and myself. They're still sat in 10th place. Uh, Constructors-wise, sorry, yeah, just to confirm, that is Logan Sargent's first ever Formula 1 points as well there. Constructors for Red Bull still lead the way ahead of Ferrari, Mercedes, Alpine and Aston Martin. Will still sat in 6th place there ahead of Williams, Haas and McLaren. But there we are then, the end of the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Thank you all so much for watching as always and we will be back very, very soon when Formula 1 returns to Miami. You guys do not want to miss it. None of these videos would be possible without the help of our channel members. So a massive thank you to all of the names you see on your screens currently for helping support the channel. You can join them by clicking the join button down below. And yeah, thank you once again to everyone that continues all the insane support on my work.